My name is Dave Hardy. My responsibility is uh, a CIO. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I evaluate software, uh, I evaluate customer needs, I work with customers in our relationship with them and their technology progression and maturity, and work with our team to select the right solutions for our, our clients. Team Logic IT is a, a franchise organization. We have uh, about 270 locations throughout the nation, a couple in Canada and one in Puerto Rico. We all work together as part of our, our network in order to provide solutions for our clients. So we actually target small and mid-sized businesses, companies within uh, you know, 20 employees up to you know 250 employees as our as our uh, target audience. We do address all verticals, uh, though we do have a strong presence in you know compliance-based uh, verticals such as healthcare, uh, legal, and other business-to-business -business organizations. So you know, Team Logic as an organization has been around for over 15 years. Um, our individual territories, we have been in business for uh, approximately five years, uh, over which time we've actually merged uh, three individual territories into one larger territory, serving the uh, greater Nashville and North Alabama areas. Uh, we have grown uh, in revenue uh, from, I would say, approximately you know, 10 clients, maybe a few hundred thousand dollars to approximately $2 million worth of revenue per year. Uh, our goals over the next uh, three years is to actually add a few more locations, as well as uh, improve our, our client security, their security stack to help improve their uh, risk profiles uh, and, you know, further increase our business uh, by approximately $500,000 of annual revenue a year. We have a lot of different security tools that we use to help our clients uh, maintain security and, and you know, keep their data where it needs to be and to help prevent uh, any kind of breach uh, that may be there that would ruin their, their good name and their, and their uh, community. Uh, you know, we, we start at the, the base level uh, at, with their network, uh, with good firewalls, good network technologies with VLAN configurations and other security configurations on their local network. Uh, we spread that up to their cloud environment. So we also secure and backup their cloud environments. Uh, we have uh, endpoint antivirus and endpoint uh, threat hunting on their devices that help us uh, monitor both their servers and their desktops for any kind of intrusion. We have uh, SOC monitoring tools that we use that allow us to aggregate all that data from their firewalls, their endpoints, their servers, their cloud into a central console that allow us to see those threats in real time and respond to those in real time. And then finally, with ThreatLocker, uh, we basically are able to meet that final bit of that that person risk by you know, ring fencing all the applications and putting rules around the applications they use so that we can prevent the, the human error from happening because like I said, you can't prevent from human error from happening uh, and also lateral movement in case devices get do get infected. Typically, we align with the NIST framework. Uh, you know, of course, depending on our clients, they may have different framework needs, uh, but NIST is the, uh, the one that we, we tend to stick with. The ability for us to provide uh, the convenience of our, our clients for them to install their own applications that have been approved allows us to remove the administrative access from their systems while also still giving them that functionality. Uh, so that's one of the areas that we're able to meet that requirement for reducing the uh, permissions at the endpoint device level and the, the server level. The reason why we, we started looking at uh, a zero trust solution like ThreatLocker, when you look at the uh, the risk of any organization, you have many, many different layers. And ThreatLocker allowed us to meet that final layer of, you know, if everything gets past our other security layers, this is the the uh, the last last stop for us in order to prevent that that ransomware attack, that um, you know, virus infection, uh, data loss that may occur based on uh, user activity. Uh, so ThreatLocker really helped us meet that foundational level of protecting the systems that no other system would able would be able to do. As an IT professional who who's been in the industry for for many years, I used to work for a hospital organization, and uh, you know I've been looking for a zero trust solution like ThreatLocker uh, for you know well over a decade. Uh, so I was excited to see that we we're able to partner with ThreatLocker uh, to meet our clients' needs. And I, I really do wish that I had this tool, that ThreatLocker, for our healthcare organization because it would have made my life uh, and my engineers' lives uh, so much easier.
love to share my experience at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I started at Vanderbilt, uh, I guess, back in 1998, and I worked there until uh, 2020, to the end of 2020, uh, during which time, when I first started, I had to manage about 150 workstations, which is not a lot, not not a whole lot. Uh, over the years, we uh, continue to add workstations to improve uh, workflows, to improve uh, patient outcomes by having good technology in place. Uh, and as we did that, we inherited a lot of different applications, a lot of, a lot of different configurations. By the time uh, 2020 hit, I grew from 150 workstations that our engineers managed to over 30,000 physical endpoints that we managed and over 20,000 virtual endpoints we managed, uh, plus all the servers, uh, you know, Active Directory type servers, uh, file servers, all the other kind of uh, you know virtualization servers that we used in order to support the organization. So, you know, we had a lot of challenges as we grew the business uh, and, you know, grew the technology in the business uh, with integrating, you know, well over 140 different applications, a lot of different hardware, many different appliances we had to connect to our devices. Uh, you know, that was always a, a real and persistent challenge for us in order to meet the needs of our uh, healthcare environment. Uh, as with, I'm sure, just about any other healthcare environment, especially hospitals, uh, it's not just an eight by five thing, it's a 24 seven thing, uh, which has real impact to the community uh, by you know improving the quality of life of our patients and their families by just doing a good job with IT. And having a tool like Threat Locker would allow us to do that effectively, more effectively with less engineering time and more security. So it would have been a huge win for us had we had a tool like this. You know, we had some minor um, malware, ransomware incursions at time. You know, one of the things that I did not mention as part of our engineering team, we actually had to harden all of our desktops. And that that took a lot of engineering hours and a lot of work and rework. You know, every time there was a new patch, every time there was a new update, every time there was a new piece of software or device to integrate, we had to harden those devices, but also still allow them to work. Um, so uh, we, through our hardening, we we're actually able to reduce um, the, the lateral movement in many cases, uh, but our devices were still infected. Uh, you know, when we got to some of the administrative devices that were less locked down, uh, those were more commonly affected by uh, malware. And we were fortunate never to have any, any major intrusion. But yeah, there were some minor intrusions that uh, we in, you know, encountered and in, in many cases thwarted because of our own hardening, but uh, would have been prevented in many cases uh, to maybe limit it just to one system at most had we had a better tool in place. I learned a lot when I worked at Vanderbilt Medical Center, uh, and, and mainly the one thing that I was able to transition from that experience over to Team Logic and our desire to use ThreatLocker is, you know, IT can be very stressful for people. And when you're in a healthcare environment or any kind of compliance-based environment where you're serving people, uh, an outage causes real-time revenue loss and also causes your clients to have a bad day. In the case of healthcare, it actually results in uh, patient outcomes that are not uh, where at Vanderbilt we would like them to be. Uh, so being able to translate that back to serving our small and mid-sized business customers, uh, I actually want to improve the quality of life for all of our clients. And we do that through selecting the right tools like ThreatLocker uh, to help them you know, get their day-to-day -day work done without too much of an intrusion or you know, too much overhead on their side or our side, uh, and also allows them the protection needed in order to you know, compute confidently. The decision really came down to, I mean, I hate to say price, but price is always a factor. But um, you know, from a functionality perspective, it had to be something that uh, was a low footprint on the endpoint, but also something that our engineers and our help desk team could manage. Uh, so the, the integration we have with our ticketing system uh, has allowed us to you know, have automatic tickets created and for us to respond in, in real time uh, in many cases. And uh, that helps us serve our clients better. I would say that some of the more um, important features are the ability for one, to have a low footprint for the end user, uh, two, have a low uh, bar of entry for our engineers and our technicians to use, and three, being integrated into our ticketing system. ThreatLocker has helped us uh, streamline our cybersecurity efforts pretty much by uh, allowing us to easily get a kind of a, a footprint or fingerprint of the applications our clients need and apply that in, you know, in pretty quick time uh, so that we can you know, really shore up the security of their systems from a server and endpoint perspective. 
when we integrated ThreatLocker into our security stack, some people were a little cautious about the technology, to be honest, and some others were super excited. And and uh, you know, some of our more technical clients realized that what we were trying to implement was also something they've always wanted, uh, but were never able to have. And the other ones that were wary, uh, we were able to explain it to them about the uh, the need. And for our compliance customers, it was very obvious to them why they needed it. But uh, in many cases. Uh, it was received very well, especially after it was implemented. For all of our new clients, I actually will not quote services without ThreatLocker in place. That's how important it is for us because uh, you know, as, as many more businesses are finding, uh, cybersecurity is a real and present threat. So in order for us to actually, well, at least in order for me to feel like we're doing a good job in our community, I feel like I have to offer ThreatLocker as an option or as a requirement in some cases because it's really, uh, you know, their good name and our good name that are at risk if we don't use ThreatLocker. I can't think of another business who does our job not taking cybersecurity seriously and including something like this in their stack. I mean, it really does have to be, you know, top to bottom from a security threat protection, you know, framework for us. And ThreatLocker, like I said, is really the foundational piece of that. Just having ThreatLocker as part of our stack really differentiates us from the rest of the other MSPs and the organizations that are competing for the same same uh, business. I think having a tool like ThreatLocker really shows that we're serious uh, and, and a serious partner when it comes to taking care of our clients. Uh, so just continuing to release uh, you know great products and new features, that, that would be all I would ask from ThreatLocker right now. The MSP space has a lot of challenges when selling services to uh, any client, regardless of size. And one of those, one of the largest challenges for that is just showing the value uh, for something that is relatively invisible for most people. Um, you know, if, if somebody is going to be sp uh, spending a certain amount of dollars per seat, uh, that's real money out of their bottom line. And being able to show that value back to them with reduced risk and an improved uptime is is really the biggest challenge. And I hope to continue to partner with ThreatLocker in order to have that feature, some of those security features, uh, being front of mind to our clients. One of the one of the interesting parts about being a VCIO, I get to look at things at uh, kind of the the twenty thousand foot view. Uh, my engineers who look at this on a day to day basis are very excited about a lot of the new features coming out. From a Team Logic perspective, I would definitely recommend ThreatLocker to uh, any of our other uh, locations that don't currently use ThreatLocker or uh, any other MSP that may ask. Mainly because it really does automate a lot of the integration tasks we have with different applications, different technologies, and different devices that uh, we support on a day-to-day -day basis. In my experience in healthcare, I think one of the things that a lot of people underestimate when they look at their IT stack is the sheer number of applications and systems that are supported in a healthcare environment. Uh, one of the things I learned over 22 years in healthcare is that you always accrue new technology and new software and you very rarely retire it. Uh, so you're always working on upgrading technologies, installing new technologies, installing new devices. Uh, ThreatLocker would be that foundational piece for healthcare, primarily because it allows you to uh, secure your devices and also send systematic updates and without you know, having too much overhead for your engineers and for your end users. Uh, as, as, as a whole, uh, I think ThreatLocker would have been able to replace a lot of the work that we did uh, to harden our systems by providing that tool in, in place with the ring fencing uh, for the software. Uh, we would actually be able to install tools and let tools automatically update uh, with low risk. Uh, and that's really when it comes down to when you're dealing with over 100 applications, as many healthcare organizations do, that you manage and support, having a tool like ThreatLocker really does help you kind of uh, put a big fence around your, your technology stack. I would go back to some of my healthcare experience and, you know, just advise anybody who would listen, honestly, uh, to evaluate your IT stack and, and compare the work you're doing with the offset of that work that, that ThreatLocker would be able to provide. Uh, really, it, had I had ThreatLocker in 1998, uh, I think I would have a lot less gray hair and uh, I would have slept a lot more because integrating all the tools and, and technologies that we had to do in healthcare uh, is not a small task. And it would, have, it would have really transformed how we did work and provided services. Mm -hmm.